What is up everyone? It's the guy here and welcome back to another episode of The Mind Here. This is my bi-weekly podcast where I talk about updates on my YouTube channel, discuss what I do behind the scenes of my videos, and talk about other things that come to mind. This also serves as a way to keep myself accountable and externally motivated to get my work done. If you're interested in how I make my music and videos, feel free to take a look at previous episodes. Welcome to all of you who are here for the first time. If you like my content and want to see more, please consider subscribing. All right, let's dive straight into our YouTube, the YouTube channel progress today because I've got quite a bit to talk about. So the first thing is uh, right around when this episode is going to come out, uh, I'll be dropping my album, the Umbrella Tree OST. And this is going to be my first album that I'm re releasing, which I'm quite excited about. And this one is quite unique. So I'll have to start with the reason why I did this. So uh, this, this was an OST, so original soundtrack for a video game that my friend made called Umbrella Tree. Um, if you're on YouTube, I'll be linking the link to the game in the description of the video. But this is a visual novel and I'm going to, I'm making the music for it. So uh, I'm pu I put it all into an album, that way it's all nice and organized and when I master things, uh, it can sound cohesive together, right? So that's, uh, that's why I made an album and I decided to make, make an album out of this uh, and um, the next part, I guess, about this uh, in the making process uh, with this, it was a little different from how I made my other songs because there's it was uh, there was a purpose to it, right? I wanted to get a certain feeling across these songs. Um, a, they aren't just standalone singles, and they had a purpose serving in the game. So um, if I if I used like the other songs that I had, um, there would probably it wouldn't fit as background music um, because it might pop out too much and take away from the um, actual video game there. So that's one thing to be aware of with background music, and it's a little shorter too than some of my other ones. Uh, these ones are around 1 minute 30, 1 minute 40. Um, so the other songs, the singles, uh, they probably be um, over two minutes. So those are just a little variations in how I made each song. And because I wanted to aim for a specific feeling, like some of them I wanted to be happy, others a little more tense, right? So uh, I had to design the song in that sense and engineering engineer it a little bit uh, compared to some of the other um, some of the other songs that I've done, which just sort of comes from inspirations, and uh, most of the the ones are just covers, which are. Um, or covers or trans, uh, transcriptions. So it's just taking the original song that was already there and putting my own twist to it. So those are the different characteristics of it. This is why uh, these songs will sound a little different because they have a different purpose to it. Um, and another thing interesting about this is that uh, I'm going to see if I can put this onto Apple Music and Spotify. Uh, and this is just because I want to expand and see if this is something that works well for me. If it doesn't, then uh, it's just a few a few songs on there. That's fine, and no one will probably find me anyways. So that's the good thing about starting out is that uh, there's it's not really high stakes. Uh, but the reason why I chose to do it now and not before is because. Uh, I wanted to make sure my music was good enough to start expanding, right? I don't want to start uh, distributing my music without having it actually be high quality. So I want to focus on the quality first and then the distribution, right? I have to have substance behind what I'm trying to give to everyone. So that's why I've started to expand out, but uh, this is this is why I waited until now. And this is also why um, like I haven't uh, put up a Patreon or something other uh, more elaborate for this channel because um, as I go, as I make content and as I feel um, how where this channel is going and where all my content is going, then I can make a better decision, right? If I start making the decisions now, then I'm sort of forced to make my content abide by those decisions. Uh, if I have to roll back my decisions, then it, it becomes kind of awkward and um, all, all sorts of troubles come in. So waiting on that and going with the flow there, uh, that's sort of how I take this in my channel. So 
uh, there, there are some things that on my channel that I plan to do, but then I, it didn't turn out well, or um, I didn't start going into it, so it took a different turn for my channel. So um, that's those are a few things that I've learned throughout the process of making my videos and doing my videos on my channel. All right. And speaking of my channel, uh, I hit a hundred subs. So thank you guys so much for this. Um, a quick disclaimer though, this probably most of this is due to uh, uh, my uh, my peers from uh, my university. They found my channel and then there was a jump of subs. So a little bit of cheating there. Uh, but uh, overall though, uh, before that I was already hitting 90s, ni lower 90 subs. So um, I've been quite amazed with how my channel's been growing. It's, it hasn't been uh, like exponential or anything, but there has been a lot of people and the I'm still amazed to see that there are people who I don't know uh, personally that are subscribed. So thank you guys so much for your support. Um, I continue, I hope to continue making my songs and improving, uh, put out some nice content for you guys. Um, and I appreciate any feedback you guys have. So really thank you guys for all the support you've given me in hitting this. I don't have anything planned for 100, um, despite being such a good number to do something with because of uh, college starting up and um, becoming busy with all this. So I'll, I'll do something a little more elaborate for uh, some other future round numbers. Uh, but for now, uh, I don't have anything planned there, so sorry you guys for that. Um, I'll, I'll think about more and then I'll, I'll come back with something that I'll make up for in the next milestone that we hit. Um, and speaking of that, um, next milestone and future plans, um, <clears throat> I have to discuss a little bit about uh, what my channel is going to look like as I go into uh, college semester, first semester. So I am staying home this semester, which means I do have some flexibility in my time. So I do have some time to create music. And since I'm at home, I have access to a lot of the equipment that I have. And that's good because then uh, all this stuff is familiar to me and I can quickly uh, make this without too much of a transition hassle there, transition cost. Um, and that, uh, that means, uh, on the other hand though, um, because it's still uh, college and I have a good workload, my schedule is no longer as free since I have homework and other things I want to get into. Uh, that means that the content production might slow a bit. And even the content of, the, uh, of these podcast episodes, um, I'll still be doing bi-weekly podcasts. Um, I still plan to do that, but it'll be a little different since I probably won't have as much um, channel content to talk about. So I'll talk a little bit more about what I've what I've been thinking or something school related, some something like that. So a little change there, and there will be a slowdown in the production. But other than that, I still hope to be doing uh, making music and other forms of art like that, and posting on my channel. And speaking of which, the next uh, the next project that I'm doing after this album is going to be a, a little bit of a experimentation, as most of my content is right now, uh, with uh, more Vocaloid, uh, the using Synthesizer Five Studio, and it's going to be a cover of. Uh, a song called Jasmine Flower. It's a Chinese song, so I'll use the Chinese voice bank and see how that turns out. Practice a little bit more of the tuning on that, as well as I want to see if I can get better at the landscape art that I've uh, been sort of doing, the, the nebulous sort of art. So I'm going to see if I can dive into that and get my own little niche there and create something unique out of that. And also just looking at some of uh, FL Studio's plugins that I haven't touched and some other uh, software that I could improve on. So a lot of testing and making a new thing. And of course, what better way to put all of the testing together than to create a project based off of that. So um, I'm a big fan of project-based learning since I, uh, I sort of need a project to motivate me and get a tangible result out of it. So that's how I'll be approaching this channel and my progress. All right, um, and let's head into uh, some thoughts that I've been thinking about. Related to my channel, uh, one thing that I want to talk about is the difference between uh, that I've noticed between client work and free work 
or something that uh, that comes out spontaneously. With client work, there's a purpose behind it, right? The client is requesting something and I have to do something uh, in order to do that, right? So there is uh, some external will opposing it, uh, a constraint on the project. So the project is going to turn out a little differently since I've constructed it sort of from the top down, right? This project is going to do this. So everything that I do has to aim towards that, which is a little different taste than some free work, uh, something that just comes out spontaneously where it's a bottom up where suddenly I think, hey, this is a good chord progression. Maybe I could do something out of that. Or, hey, this is a nice melodic line. Maybe if I add some bass to it and expand on it, I'll see what happens, right? I don't have an exact plan for it. I just know that I want to improve on this and expand on it. So those are a little bit different and a little bit different in feeling too and in the process too. Uh, during the process of making the songs in the album, I, I've come across some times where I didn't feel inspired, but I knew I still had to keep going on and doing, doing excuse me, making these songs. So uh, in a normal circumstance or in when I'm doing something for myself from the bottom up, if I don't feel inspired, then I don't really want to put anything in there. And that's still sort of true for client work, uh, top down approach. But uh, there's also the uh, the impending due date that I have to hit. So then there is that aspect of a due date that sort of uh, squashes out art a little bit um, in order for the sake of like production sake. But uh, overall, it, it just have, has a different sense of uh, taste to the work. I don't know if you guys notice it, but uh, when I look at some other people's work too, if this is just a one-off thing that someone did versus uh, this was something done for someone else and they had a, a deadline, then it seems different, especially in the art world. Maybe not in uh, engineering or something like that where deadlines are pretty crucial since otherwise uh, nothing gets done or something like that. But just in the art space where you put creativity to work and create something for yourself or something like that, then I notice a difference. You can tell in the difference um, in the results, but there's also a difference in the process too that most people don't see because it's the behind the scenes of the artwork. And um, another thing that I've been thinking about uh, during the past two weeks between this episode and last episode was the idea of the lockdown generation. Uh, and this was just something that I saw in an email newsletter and I saw this and I realized that there was something that there was a prediction that I have and I thought it might be something uh, interesting to share with you guys. So my prediction is that this lockdown generation, it was sort of speaking to um, everyone that was in this time, but I have a feeling that the kids who are growing up right now around the world, in the US especially, uh, around this time, so like kindergarten, second grade, somewhere around there, those people that are growing up, they might be part of a almost different generation because of the COVID-19 pandemic. In the, or not even just that, um, but the reason why I think that is, is uh, because the, the way that their world has been constructed to them, the world they know, um, that'll influence their behavior overall and how they um, view the world going into the future, right? For example, people who lived in it during the Great Depression, they uh, come out of this with a scarcity mindset. Um, they want to make the most out of things, right? Because that makes sense. They didn't have a lot during that time, so now they want to hold, make the most out of uh, what they have. They hold on to things a lot, right? Uh, I haven't done a research into this. Uh, this is uh, based off of some things I've read in the past and some things I've been thinking about. So don't take all this as a uh, fact. This is just uh, some ideas that have been popping into my head. But with, with the idea of this is that this generation, the lockdown generation, not specifically people like high schoolers who knew of a world where uh, we could go outside and have fun with friends and we were more relaxed. Uh, I feel like the, the generation growing up now uh, will be in a trustless, they'll view the world through a trustless lens. And the reason why I say trustless is because during this pandemic, it really showed how uh, broken the 
government systems have been in the U.S. So uh, there have been there was already a lack of trust and a division, a strong polarization between the political parties. So there was a loss of trust there, and then the increasing cybersecurity attacks, issues with that. There was also a loss of trust there, and now that you can't even. Come near to someone else without the risk of getting an infection or something like that.、Um, there really starts to seem like a loss of trust, right? You, you start, you look at this world and you grow up in a trustless world. So then, maybe their behaviors in the future might seem odd to those of us who weren't part of that generation, but it might be something that's plausible to them. Uh, those are just some thoughts that I've been thinking about, and、uh, maybe something that we can do about.、Uh, with social situations like this, it's quite hard to find a remedy most times because the problems are complex, and the decisions the, the decisions that are made here need to be quite subtle. Otherwise,、uh, things might not turn out as you expect. So. Uh, remedying a trustless society will take something that is.、Uh, Probably not just one discipline, but、um, and we it doesn't it won't take、uh, you'll need more than just one person to solve this. So so、um, I'm just bringing this up and sort of thinking about this,、um, keeping this in the back of the mind when whenever all of us go out and do our work,、um, maybe we'll keep this in mind and maybe have an open mind if someone is acting different, or maybe look at how our technology impacts. Uh, this uh, this observation that I've made of a trustless society, a society that has lost its trust between its people. All right, so that'll probably wrap things up. I don't have an AMA question this、uh, episode, and that's fine.、Uh, I do have to first apologize because I thought that there were comments in the podcast platforms that only had audio, but that I was mistaken. I didn't do my research into that. So apologies if you wish to、uh, submit a question, then feel free to come onto YouTube, onto、um, the Mind Here、uh, episodes, and、uh, just put it into the Comment section,、uh, preferably the most recent episode, and I'll take a look and I'll draw out a winner for the next time if there's a question, and I'll answer it live here. So with that, thank you so much for watching, guys. If you、uh, if you liked what you hear, then consider following me or subscribing. And take care, guys. I will see you guys on the next episode.